I think, you know, Big Wednesday became our uh, American graffiti. Big Wednesday captures that kind of no nostalgic feel that we look for when we go surfing. I'm the real Jack Baller. <laughs> I told people I was going to do that, and they all went, no, you can't do that. You're the world champ. You have to defend the title. And I said, I'm going to Hollywood to make some money. <laughs> Milius asked me, do you know anybody that looks like Busey that can surf? And I said, yeah, I got the perfect guy. He in cans looks just like him, and he's <laughs> he's a masochist too. Big Wednesday was uh, a pretty extraordinary experience. Um, the, the year before, uh, I'd come second to PT in the world and I was the main money winner. Big Wednesday tells exactly the same story that we've been living through in the last 20 years. Uh, you know, there is the prize, there's a payoff. That's the piece of nostalgia that I think we're missing today that where's our payoff? Like you have, you know, just look what's going on today. Look what we've been going through. When you see those behind the scenes shots, it's nothing but professionalism that's going on. And film really pulls up over time if it was done well and right. And, and Big Wednesday was. For them to secure both of those guys for the water unit was pretty amazing. I just remember that, you know, you ride, you know, at sunset in a big Norworth swell and you enter the inside section. And there's George Greeno sitting on a rubber mat, uh, filming us, you know, coming at him. And he knows he's gonna get mowed down by the inside section. And the same thing with Merkel. Yeah, you know, Merkel is just such a well-known photographer in those days. When you've got eccentric people that dare to do something sort of outside of the box and just extraordinary, you know, tomorrow has a future. And, and so that's what the, you know, the experience was for me. There's these people that could imagine stuff and then, you know, lo and behold, there it is on the big screen. Those guys were crazy. I mean, the camera's freaking giant. It's not, it's not GoPro days. <laughs> if you actually watch the last scene of that film, that cinematography stands up against anything that's ever been done, in my opinion. For us to work with them, it was really, I guess it's sort of part of the whole life altering experience thing for me, to work with people of that calibre in such a thing where, oh, we didn't get the shots, we're gonna go to Hawaii for six weeks, there's another five million bucks, who cares? <laughs> that's, that's just how Hollywood is. There was an innocence that they captured. We all harken back to when our you know, golden age was. And even though it was only a slice of that, I think, you know, with time, um, the heart grows fonder maybe. And it just 
resonates now. The story's real. Every kind of real surf town have those kind of characters. I'm proud, of, I'm proud I really made that decision to say, hey, screw defending the world title, I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> You assemble all of these people and all of these places and all of these story ideas and the music and all of a sudden it all just gels and comes together into this story of a group of surfers growing up at Malibu. So that whole nostalgia aspect and happy ending is, is something that's really compelling. I still get royalty checks. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs>